Well, that was uh, some kind of motor race. Well done to our top three tonight. And uh, Chaz Mostert, Nick Perkett, James Courtney. Thanks for the all-time show here, guys. And uh, about a million storylines, so I'll keep my role fairly short and I'll open it up to the journos as quick as I can. Uh, let's start with Chaz, who's probably trying to get some liquids into himself right now. The closing stages of that race, when it all became fairly apparent that you might be on for a one-two, uh, how momentous was that for you in the car and then the moment getting out and, and feeling the gravity of what you just achieved there with Nick? Um, yeah, the, the last part of that race was pretty hectic, obviously, working out a lot of people didn't um, have all their fuel in and, and things like that. And then you had Anton still out there. He might be good to the end, but he doesn't have a radio. And so he couldn't script a, uh, an Adelaide 500 kind of like that. Um, and then obviously for, a, you know, Walkershaw and Dreddy United to go 1-2, um, you know, the old HRT team, with its special livery, um, yeah, it would be the only way it would be better if it was on a Sunday. Um, but look, you never take these for granted. It's it's pretty special, and it's special to share the podium with Nick. Um, you know, it's this year. It's no, it's been a little bit ups and downs for both of us. Um, but yeah, for him to, to get a podium here for the team, one two, it's um, it's a fairy tale, it's, and I'm sure it's a fairy tale for the Holden fans as well. How cool was the inlap rolling together down the back straight and then getting on the roof together? <laughs> Yeah, the roof was the, the enjoyable part. We were going <laughs> side by side on the inlap and um, the track so sketchy offline that we were having like the biggest moments at like 10k an hour. So um, felt like the cars were on go jacks down there at 9 and 11 when we were offline. So you can see that um, how hectic it was for, for the, you know, everyone out there just to finish that race. As soon as you made one little error, get the car in the wrong spot, um, there was no stopping that thing. So... Um, yeah, I hope they can have a real good sweep up tonight and clean as much up as they can um, and look at maybe potentially doing some more through the sessions tomorrow because, um, yeah, that, there were some obviously pretty big crashes just by going offline. Does that end the, uh, the curse of the retro liveries? I didn't even know there was one. So you media always look at different statistics and try to come up with stories, so you don't have a story anymore. <laughs> good. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs> Story is the one too. I'll get a word off the local boy. You've had some pretty big days here, Nick. How does that one sit in the uh, the history of you and the Adelaide Parkland circuit? Oh, that's the coolest thing I've ever been involved in. Um, that for me watching this race as a young kid and being a tragic HRT fan. Um, yeah, those last four or five laps, I was like, this is actually unbelievable. I've watched this as a fan climbing a tree to see these kind of moments um, as a kid. So yeah, pretty surreal, amazing um, story for our team with those liveries, um, with what, you know, what the Holden brand means to Ryan, Martin, everyone at uh, WAU, it's very, very cool. And I guess what it means personally with, with my family, um, hopefully now my granddad gets a bit starstruck for me because he met Chaz the other day and he fully got starstruck. So hopefully now I've uh, won him over because obviously the Holden brand is, uh, extremely important to uh, my family. Awesome, mate. I'm sure the journos will have more for you in a second. I'll, I'll go over to JC. Um, I don't want to delve too much in I didn't enjoy the in-lap as much as these two critters. <laughs> <laughs> um, I saw them showboat and I was like, oh, yes, I'm out of here. <laughs> it's hot. I'm getting out. <laughs> Sorry, I just jumped in there. That's fair. Um, I won't go into too much detail on it, but it's been a hell of a week for you. So to just put a, a full stop on it with a great result and a podium on a crazy race... Just your emotions right now. Yeah, it's um, yeah, like you said, it's been a, like a, a hell leading. It's um, uh, personally, it's been um, you know, it's something I've never had to deal with before. So the the lead into the event was was chaos. Um, but yeah, to then have everything turn out well as it did with with my new little bloke and um, and then to get this result for the team after the chaos that we've had since. You know Bathurst and then Gold Coast. It's uh, those guys have repaired that thing <laughs> every every weekend. It's been a full rebuild. So to be able to reward them with with the result is is fantastic. Um, like these boys touched on, the conditions were like I've, I don't think I've ever been in, in a race where it's so sketchy. Like you're half a tie width offline and you're in the wall. So it's um, it uh, yeah it was pretty entertaining. Um, you know it's a bad one when Van Gizzer's firing off a few times. <laughs> so uh, that shows how sketchy it was. But um, Thankfully, I kept it on for most of the part. I did rub a wall at one point when old Nick went past me there, that's and I was like, "What?" That was worth second place, mate. <laughs> um, obviously, you spent many a year driving for the team that the boys are driving for. 
uh, following them to the chequered flag at the end there, did you even get an idea of what the gravity oh, of that was? My wins was? here for the team were much better. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it was weird. I, did, I was quite emotional about it. Um, you know, I had 10 years with Ryan and Martin and, and that whole crew, and I got out and Ryan was the first guy I went up to and congratulated him, and then I saw Bruce and, and whatever. So, yeah, I know how much, it, like Nick touched on that, how much it means to those guys. Um, you know, I would have loved to have, have uh, done that as well, but, uh, you know, I don't know nothing I did, but it wasn't as special at Townsville as what it is here with, <laughs> with, with the event going on, and I was always second, which was annoying. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but, no, it's, it's special, and it's great that... Um, I think the last, or I wish it was Sunday, like Chaz said, the last podium is the two factory, you know, historic teams, the ones that started it out. So, um, you know, that's pretty cool. Um, would have been cooler if it was Cam and I up there, especially if I was ahead of him. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's, it's, um, it's quite fitting, really. Good job, man. Really good to see you on the podium today. All right, let's uh, go to the journos. Probably a question for each of you, but um, I'll start with uh, with Chaz. Um, I guess you know people talk about drivers not racing Shane hard enough. Obviously, you raced him hard, and you know whatever happened, it was a racing incident. But I mean, I guess uh, that turned out to be pretty critical that you didn't just kind of let him by. Uh, yeah, I was wobbling around. Same same thing. It was really hard after the safety car to clean the tires up for whatever stuff was was getting on them. So um. I was pretty vulnerable the first lap. Shane was all over me, and um, I just made, made sure I kept staying to the inside uh, when he was trying to drive up around the outside of me. So turn six was especially bad there. Um, and he, he did have a run from five up to six to get decent overlap in front of me, but I was going to make sure I could make him stay as wide as possible because um, that's what he would do to me. So, um, yeah, once I saw him go off, I was like, oh, that, that sucks for him, but... Um, that's what was happening. That's what you needed to do is get on that clean line. And um, even though I was wobbling around and he probably would have got me um, if I kept wobbling around and didn't clean ties up, um, that was that was the outcome of the race. Uh, Nick, uh, I know you gave a shout-out to Adam on the TV, but, um, yeah, obviously the strategy was massive for you today. And, uh, yeah, I mean, could you have imagined this happening from where, where today started? No, I thought with the strategy we were running, we might have snuck into the back of the 10 like it was just a, cl a green race because once we pitted on lap five um you know when i came back out the pace was pretty good um and then yeah what as it all unfolded and i kind of figured out what was happening pretty quickly when i had to come back in straight away for fuel to make sure i got all the fuel in um and i thought to myself there's not a chance half of these cars are going to have the correct fuel in them so it was about keeping it clean Keeping it online because it was, yeah, like the others have said, crazy. As soon as you went offline, you were, you were a passenger. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to keep the car clean and tidy and look after the tyre, knowing that I, I would be in a good position. And then it was, um, yeah, a few little battles on restarts with people wobbling around with JC and Andre and stuff. So, um, yeah, it was just a, a credit to the team to read the play about, you know, getting me back in to um, get that fuel in the safety car and um, amazing strategy. And, yeah, I kind of... Once I came back in, they're like, oh, you're 19th. And I'm like, no, nah, we're not. We're not 19th. <laughs> there's, there's a bit to play out here, so it was very cool. Uh, last from me, uh, JC, uh, I guess, would you consider this to be your best season that you've had for, for probably a, a few years? I mean, you've been podium at, I think, three. I would have said that from rather than the <laughs> Gold Coast. But, yeah, the speed's been good. Uh, I had a lot of shit luck. Um, and things happen out of your control. But, yeah, the, the speed's been good. Um, good amount of podiums. Um, you know, like Nick, the, the race was chaotic. And when I came in, I had to double stack behind Cam. I was, I was, uh, <laughs> I was thinking that the, w the day was over. Scaff had a, you know, was really quick thinking to change over and, and do the same strategy as Nick. So, but, um, but yeah, like it's, it's been great. Um, I'm love working with these guys and have great relationship with working relationship and relationship with Cam. He's a good, really talented young bloke and and. Um, really strong performer and it's uh it's nice seeing him grow and develop and and um working within the team and i'm believe believe hey massa massa or whatever the hell already over i'm one of those guys just playing second fiddle and rolling around and rear gunner so it's um you know when the cards fall the right way i stand, try and do the job but um but yeah it's it's great i'm loving working where i am um you know still plenty of fight in me um and uh yeah i want to keep keep going um, Chaz, I think you uh, passed the pit lane entry just as the safety car was coming out at one point. I mean, 
Did you think it was all over then? <laughs> What's that? <laughs> um, no, I can't really remember. No, not at that stage. Did we pit again after that or no? <laughs> no, I, if, when we kind of before the last safety car come and other cars had to pit, I already knew that we were good, good on fuel. So um, I just didn't know what the other cars around were the situation. So um, yeah, when that came, I was waiting to see what was going to happen. Uh, just one for JC. Um, given everything that was going on at home, did you give thought to not coming here to race, and, and was it hard to <laughs> to leave the little fella at home? No, I always had to come because I got to put food in the little bastard's mouth. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I was never attempted not to come. I, I was going to have to come, but uh, but yeah, it was, it's hard hard leaving. Um, you know, the it's um, it, the good thing about it is everything changed so quickly, and um, kids recover, and, and um, you know, when the surgeon said it would be. Uh, you'd see results within you know 24 hours. I was like, oh, okay. And he's like, within 20, within in 48 hours, you won't even see the the incision where they went in. And I was, sort of thought he was talking a bit of crap. But uh, yeah, they just because they're so small and growing and just recovered so quickly. And he started to put on a good amount of weight. And we're out of hospital. And so yeah, leaving leaving was um, was easier for me than Tegan. I think she's um, <laughs> she's at home still. Um, you know, going and getting the checks at the hospital and stuff. But uh, no, he's he's good turn um look if it was this week it would have been incredibly tough i um yeah if it happened when i was away it would have been i would have been here and then straight away home but um yeah it's unfortunate that uh, i was fortunate that it happened when it did um but yeah i don't want to think about if it happened the other way around but uh, yeah lucky it happened that way james um when you uh, obviously that mistake cost you second position Yep. Um, was it the... <laughs> sorry to highlight that. Um, was it the, the marbles offline? You guys have all talked about how slippery it was offline. Was, you seem to have the pace to stick with Nick, um, yeah. but was it just that offline that was stopping you making the pass? Yeah, was, Jake was trying to let me pass and it just sort of got real messy and I was wide and then Brock propped in front and those guys were running in, into each other and I touched them and then I ended up rubbing the wall and then Nick went past. There was just so much shit going on. But, uh, but yeah, we had good pace. I was able to run right behind Nick, but with these cars, you just get so hot. The front tyre just melts off the thing, the brakes fade, and you have to hope that they make a mistake, but unfortunately he didn't. Um, so it's uh, hopefully with the new car, we, that, that changes um, and we can run and sort of run a bit closer and pass. But through turn eight, you have to get out of it because I don't want to end up in the wall. The guys have fixed it enough, so it's... Um, yeah, I was just cruising, not cruising. I was racing as hard as I could behind Nick, hoping that he'd make a mistake, but unfortunately he didn't. But yeah, we had good pace, but um, you know, that cost us. And then Nick, solid job, didn't make any mistakes, so he couldn't get back past. Thank you. And Nick, two-part question. <coughs> um, you mentioned uh, Bathurst the other day, getting a podium here, winning here would be bigger than Bathurst. Um, how does this feel on the Bathurst scale? Um, and the other thing, you talked about not having feel in the car earlier in the weekend. Did that change? Did you just drive around that or has there been an improvement in that uh, scenario? Um, no, the, the way we've ended up on the podium here um, with what it means to the team and my family, this is yeah better than the Bathurst win um, for personal reasons and um, you know for Ryan, Bruce and the, the everyone in Clayton that's you know not here as well it's a pretty big deal what just happened so uh yeah that's amazing and then yeah the car we I struggled with it yesterday a little bit um we had a few little other issues in quality but then the boys did a good job last night found a few things that they thought might help me get a bit better you know rear grip that's what it was what it was at the end of the day and um yeah they've made a step in the right direction it um, still wasn't as quick as Chaz uh, obviously managed to pull a gap on us and uh, yeah with JC it was let him come and come up behind me and let him fry his tyres so I was I was just kind of at a comfortable pace there I didn't want to take any risk and because um, I knew I probably I wouldn't be able to fight with Chaz there so it's not quite where I want it but it's definitely a step in the, the right direction but you know it's um, still a bit of learning like I've got a new engineer um, with Adam and he's amazing um, he's been in the in the team for a long time now and you know just learning the magnitudes of you know when I say it's understeering what kind of scale that is so it's just all about preparing for next year and um, for me this year was amazing to come to the team but it was always about the following year being a factory team gen 3 um, and being alongside Chaz. Thank you and last one um, Chaz 
Um, how the strategy played out today, were you, uh, did you just do what the team told you to do or did you, were you figuring out on the run yourself or how did it play out? Because it was obviously super chaotic even to watch. If you ask any driver actually what happens in a race and they actually give you a that they know what's going on, they're bullshitting you. <laughs> so, um, look, you never know. I think, you know, if we go back to when um, Nick won here in the wet and the fuel drops and all those kind of things, it's uh, it's tricky. And safety car comes at the wrong time. We all talk about our danger danger areas and stuff like that and how teams can reduce that factor and in, in, in what we do with start fuel and stuff like that. Um, I think for us at WAU, we put a lot of emphasis into that, um, in, into the lead up to the race. So um, obviously today it worked really well, you know, knowing exactly what to do with Nick's car to stop again and take more fuel. Um, they're, you know, really good um, at, at those high pressure situations at WAU. So um, look, today, obviously it, we'd like to say we're the fastest car out there. We did the best jobs of the drivers and we drove past heaps of people. Today was a real team win and, um, and that's about doing all the one percenters right. Um, and, and that's where we are today. Right, we'll go uh, two more. I've got one with Craig here, and then we'll uh, finish up on Lockie. Chaz, yesterday when you were talking here, you'd spoken about how you, the marbles weren't very bad offline. Today, how quick into the race did you find that there was just no second line? Oh, I, I, yeah, yeah um, at the cars were pretty edgy, you know, with full fuel and... Um, you know more race setups with them. That was probably the biggest thing um, I'd say it was probably at the start of the race quite dusty was probably the real one I didn't realize it was that dusty across the weekend. I don't know what happened before the start of the race But it was dust and then all of a sudden you started noticing like bitumen marbles that were, were starting to come so I'd say It was pretty sketchy from the word go but two totally different things Question for all three of you is on this a live? yeah, on a it's no, it's not. I'm not filming it Straight live. On your shirt. <laughs> on a first <laughs> date, should oh, the man always be the one that pays? You tell us. Yeah, you're We've really seen you on TV. I want your opinion. Uh, um, yeah, I always. Yeah, I'm a payer. Yeah, I'm, I'm a payer. payer. <laughs> Nick always paid for me. <laughs> <laughs> what else you got, Lucky? <laughs> Sweet, thanks guys. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> and on that note, gentlemen, thank you very much. Chad's <laughs> going to pick up the tab on the way out and uh, we'll see you back here tomorrow. <laughs>